Hello and welcome to Outdoors and That. In this video we are going to be looking at bearings. So we'll start by setting up your compass for declination and then using bearings to go from the map to the land and then also from the land to the map and then a triangulation technique to work out where you are using bearings only. When we apply the differences between true north and grid north and magnetic north on our map we need to make some adjustments and that's called declination. So when I add my compass to the map, on this projection, the Mercator projection, my grid lines are gonna be running perfectly north and south and east and west, so across the map in a perfect square. But you can see on my compass, the magnetic needle is not pointing to north. And if I move it sideways uh, along like this, it remains pointing to the one place. And that's because my magnetic needle of the compass is going to point towards the magnetic north of the Earth. And that is a location uh, up here in northern Canada. I need to account for the difference between my grid lines when I'm looking at a map that's in Australia and the direction which my magnetic needle is pointing to, which is over to the magnetic north. For me in Australia, I'm in Canberra, I have 13 degrees towards the east is the difference between magnetic north and grid north on my maps. And I have about 1.5 degrees as the difference between my grid north and my true north location. But we're not really going to worry about that little difference because it doesn't apply in our navigation settings. The difference between my magnetic needle pointing to magnetic north and grid lines is the declination adjustment I need to make. If I were to take a bearing and then minus 13 degrees off the map, you can see that I've now aligned my grid north and my magnetic needle. So that's how that is working. If I'm pointing just on the land like this and then I want to add my information to the map, you can see that I have got the grid lines looking in the wrong spot so if i add 13 degrees then that gives me the true bearing for the grid lines versus the magnetic needle so that's all because i'm in australia and in australia we are to the east of the magnetic north depending on where you are in america you might be to the east of it a little bit or if you're on this side of america you would be to the west so if i move to the west side of magnetic north then I'm going to have to make some adjustments and I've just done a little camera trick to make this work. So here I have the magnetic needle now pointing more towards the magnetic pole, but I'm on the western side and so the difference here is now a few degrees to the west. And so I'm going to have to do the reverse calculation or declination adjustment, which I did when I was on the eastern side of the magnetic pole. So if I'm taking a bearing from my map and I want to use it on the land, I'm going to have to add an extra, say 13 degrees, if I'm in exactly opposite to where I was before, and that will then align my magnetic needle and the grid lines on the map, and then I can use that about in real life. If I take my real life bearing from the magnetic field where I'm located, and then I want to add that to the map, well then I have to minus my adjustments and so if i minus 13 degrees then i could line up my grid lines and the bearing that i took then and so that's accounting for the difference between the grid lines and the location of magnetic north so here on the back of my map i have my magnetic north is 13.3 degrees east of grid north and so by adding my 13 degrees when I'm moving my compass from the land to the map that's the same as accounting for this east of grid north direction if you're west of grid north then you're going to do the opposite of what I've just done so you'd have to minus your declination off your compass reading but you can also set up your compass as I looked at before to account for the declination of your location Right, so here we're going to take a compass bearing 
and I'm along this section of track here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up the base plate, the edge of the base plate with the track that I'm on. Then I'm going to align the lines on the inside of my bezel with the grid lines that are on the map. And so I've lined up those two features there. We're not worrying about our magnetic needle at this point in time. Then, because I'm taking my compass off the map, I then need to adjust for the magnetic and grid line variation. And so on this map, it's 13 degrees. And so I'm taking it off the map. So I'm gonna minus that off my uh, number here. And so if I look at the top of the compass, I've got a bearing of 52. So I'm gonna minus 13 uh, off that. So if we minus 10, then that's down to 42 and then we want 39 degrees. And the final part of this is I need to line up my magnetic needle and the shed inside my bezel. And so I'll spin my compass around like this. Now I'm aligning my magnetic needle inside the shed there. And the direction on my base plate is the direction of my track. So we have that all lined up uh, there. And so that gives me the direction that I wanna travel uh, here. All right, so here I'm about to take a land to map bearing. So I've got my direction of trail and this trail is not marked on the map, it's reasonably new and so I just wanted to check that I'm still going in the right direction and so I'm going to take my compass and point the base plate and directional arrow in the way that I want to go so this is where the, the track is heading then I'm going to twist my bezel until the magnetic needle is living inside the shed now I've rotated my bezel so the magnetic needle is living inside the orientation arrow which is in the bezel and then the direction of the base plate is in the direction that I want to go. Then I can look at the top here and see I have a bearing of 210. Then I'm going to add this bearing to my map and to do that I need to account for the declination which is not preset in this compass. So at 210 I'm going to have to add 13 degrees to match the variation between the magnetic north and the grid lines on my map so that will take us up to 223 as my bearing direction so the next part of this is to line up your orientation lines in the base of your bezel with the grid lines on the map and so here i can line those up then i'm going to look at the edge of the base plate and that's going to give me my direction of travel and so here I'm traveling in this direction and I, the track that I'm on runs along this area uh, through here. And so it's not actually marked on the map at this point as it's, it's a new track, but I can confirm that with my direction of travel from the land to map bearing, that if I was uh, in this region here, then I am traveling uh, in the right direction to my destination, which is out at Shepherd's Lookout over there. So here I've been walking along a section of track which is quite uniform, and I have quite a defined feature, which is the dam out in front of me there. And I'm gonna use this because it's at right angles to my current location to identify where I am on the track using a land to map bearing. So I'm gonna point my base plate at the feature, which is the dam, then rotate my bezel until I align my magnetic needle and the red shed or the orientation arrow which is inside the bezel. Then I'm going to adjust for my declination. So I need to, in this case, add 13 degrees because I'm adding this information to my map and I'm to the east of magnetic north. And then I'm gonna line up my orientation lines which are in the base of the bezel with the grid lines on the map and then line the edge of the base plate up with the feature which I can see on the map, which is the dam. And so then that gives me the exact location of where the bearing is crossing the section of track that I'm on. 
and so that pinpoints my location for this section of track. Alright, so here I'm going to use a technique called triangulation and this is using a land to map bearing and so you're going to need at least two better three and the more the better than that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pick out what I think are really noticeable points in the landscape and I mean I am at a known location here so that makes it makes it a bit easier but if we look down the river we can see a really straight line section of river down there so my first bearing that I'm going to do uh, is that one and that will line me up with this then uh, over the other side of the river I have uh, a reasonable size uh, knoll that's quite noticeable in the landscape and we'll have a look at that one and do a bearing off that and then I might also do one that's a bit closer uh, just in here we can see there's a creek coming into the side of the river uh, in there and that's going to provide three points to provide me with my location the other option is you could use something from the other direction but there's not really uh, any easy land features there because of the bush I can't see uh, behind so we'll get started on those. So first thing again I'm going to point the base plate along the section of river and holding out in front of me like that. Then I need to spin the bezel so the orientation lines on the inside of the bezel are matching up with the magnetic north and so I will do that one. So spin that around. I think that's pretty good uh, at the moment and so we'll take our bearing uh, off that and put that on the map. So I mean at this point in time I already know that I'm at Shepherd's Lookout but I've got this really straight section of river there. So because I'm adding my information from the land to the map and I'm 13 degrees east of north I need to add another 13 degrees to my bearing. So I've got a bearing of 315 then I need to make that 300 and 324 and then what I'm going to do I'm going to align the orientation lines on the inside of the bezel with the grid lines on my map and extend that out this way we're not worrying about the magnetic uh, needle so that's getting a bit of interference from the metal platform which I'm on that's the the bearing that I have for the, the direction of that so it's coming pretty close to where the shepherd's lookout is maybe it's off by about what's that a degree maybe one degree uh, to get that to be exactly right we have our next point I was going to use this one on the inside of the hill there so we'll go and take our bearing for that so I pointed my compass at the feature and I have a bearing of 200 and 80 right on the dot so that means my bearing on the map needs to be 293. So 293 I'm going to line up my grid lines with the map and then slide it down and so pointing at my feature right here I can see the base plate edge uh, is lining up pretty closely with the shepherd's lookout. So now I've got two lines that I had drawn on my map, one there uh, and one here and so that would be indicating that I'm just a little bit to the right of the Shepherd's Lookout and then I could do uh, a third one and so the third one I said was to use this creek junction uh, in there so just where that creek pops out of the, the hill so let's do that uh, my feature is just down in there and I'll line up my base plate and twizzle my bezel to align the orientation lines with the inside of the magnetic needle and then we'll put that on our map. I've got a compass bearing reading of 336 so then I need to add 13 to that so that is 346, 349 on the map and so then I'm gonna align my grid lines with the feature on the map there we go pretty pretty good for that so there I've got now three points of information in different directions which are providing me with my location uh, which is confirmed at being at the shepherds lookout there
So you could do this, I mean, if you were at a, like on top of the knoll, then you could use the other points there as well. And so it is a technique to just confirm your location in the landscape. It's best if you've got pretty good views uh, for that. Your task for this week is to walk on a tracked environment using bearings and the triangulation techniques that we looked at in this video. So go and do that in a local area near you. And if you can find a track that has good visibility around into the surrounding areas, then that'll help with those land to map bearings. So the next video in this series is looking at implied features and using the small features of the landscape to help identify where you are and work out your position. So thanks for watching this episode of Outdoors Nat and check out my next video over there. Have a great outdoor adventure.